Hello, Lovelace, and welcome to today's English lesson, continuing our work on non-chronological reports. And as you can see, our objective for today is the same as yesterday. Can I plan my own non-chronological report about the Vikings? OK, so we're going to be carrying on task wise. We're going to be carrying on with yesterday. Uh, but I just wanted to spend the first part of the lesson looking at some uh, some more grammar. And in particular, just wanted to mention pronouns and determiners. These are little words and they are regularly just little words, but they help the reader understand what is going on in a story or in a piece of writing. Now, the pronoun, these are words that we use to replace the noun. OK, so a word that is used in place of a noun that is a specific person or thing, such as she, him, mine, we, I, us, me, herself, and so on and so on. OK, uh, they just allow us not to constantly keep repeating the same word, that the noun word. So in the sentence example here, we've got although he was tired, the young boy ran quickly into his bedroom to read a book. OK, it helps us understand that it was the boy who was tired without constantly saying the boy, the boy, the boy. So the boy was tired because it refers to he. And then we know whose bedroom it was. It was his bedroom. So instead, instead of us saying, although the boy was tired, the young boy ran quickly into the boy's bedroom to read the book which would get very repetitive, we can use pronouns to replace the noun and just make our reading, I suppose, more readable, more palatable for the reader. Okay? Avoid all that repetition. The other term we've got on the screen at the moment is determiner. Okay? Now, determiners, I say, these are words that you've used for years and years and years without possibly realising exactly what they were. But they're words that introduce a noun. They give us a clue as to whose noun it is, how many there are. Is it a particular one? Does it belong to someone? So on and so on. OK, so determiners are words like am, a, every, this, those, the. And in our sentence example, we've got although he was tired, the young boy ran quickly into his bedroom to read a book. OK. So it just tells you a little bit about the nouns in this particular sentence. But let's focus on determiners. Let's look at those in a little bit more detail today. So determiners are words that come before and introduce a noun. And they can give the reader information about it. OK. The. My. A. Teacher. So teacher is the noun in this. Well, it's not a sentence, but in this phrase. Each one of those could work. We could say the teacher. We could say my teacher, or we could simply say a teacher. Okay? It depends on the context of the sentence. It depends what you're trying to communicate. Okay? So the teacher. My teacher, although not in your case, obviously. And a teacher. So. This is the specific, a specific teacher. We're talking about the teacher, this, this particular one, Mr. Burford. In this case, we'd be talking about my teacher. So if Mr. Burford was your class teacher, then that would be your determiner. And the final one, very, very general, just a teacher, any teacher. Okay. Now, these are all specific determiners. And there are different classes of determiner, which we'll look at. These are specific ones. We use specific determinators when, when the reader know exactly what noun you're referring to. So we just mentioned Mr. Burford there. So he was the teacher. Okay, he had a particular, a specific teacher. We've got the, this, those, these, that, which, her, my, his, your, whose, our, and their. Okay, big long list. These are all specific. So these identify a particular noun. Now, the is a special one. It's the definite article. So it's talking about a particular noun. Which is the interrogative determiner. So if you've ever watched cop shows, an, an interrogation is questioning. So this is a questioning determiner. It's asking, 
Which one? Which teacher? Which cat? Which dog? Okay. So there's a question element to that one. This little group are definite determiners. Okay, so it's again, it's identifying a particular group. And then these are possessive determiners. These link the object to a person. It's her teacher, it's my book, it's his dog, and so on. So this links to a person, links it as a possession. Right. So we use specific determinators when the reader knows exactly what noun you're referring to. So it's a particular thing, not just any old book or any old car. It's a particular one. Okay, so the minion is smiling. Which film did you go and see? Have a think. Can you complete this sentence using a specific determinate, uh, determiner? What word could fit in here? Mm. Dad's car broke down on the way home last night. What do you think? Now, there's a few possibles, but they are going to be possessive determiners. So it could be my dad's car broke down, or her dad's car broke down, or their dad's car broke down. So I would expect you to have come up with a possessive determiner to fit in that sentence there. Now, general determiners, these refer to I suppose any old object. Okay, so the reader doesn't know, say, a specific item that we're talking about, a specific noun. So words like a, any, other, an, another, and what. It's it's a dog. It's a cat. It's a shoe. It's not a particular one. Okay? It's not become important in our in our story in our piece of writing yet. So it's just say it's just a plate. OK, or whatever it is. So very general. Now, general determiners can also tell a reader how many of something there is. And we call these quantifiers. So our quantifiers are some, all the numbers. So we've used five there as an example. But one is a quantifier. Two is a quantifier. One hundred and twenty seven is a quantifier. So we've got some, five, few, more, all, enough, many and less. So these give us a clue as to the number of the noun. Okay. So there are some books. He has all the sweets. She has enough money and so on. So it gives us a clue as to amount. Okay. Right. Here's your a mini task for you. you can just think of this. You do not need to write it down unless you choose to. But where are the determiners in these sentences? We've got five sentences. Pause the video and see if you can point to, see if you can identify all the determiners in these sentences. Okay, in the first one, remember determiners generally go just in front of nouns. So if we can find the nouns, we can, uh, we're a long way to finding the determiners. Well, the nouns are ball and path. So it's the ball, the path. Okay, what about in the next one? We've only got one noun here, and that's computers. So only one determiner. Any computers must be turned off. In the next sentence, we've got dogs and field as our nouns. So five and the. So we've got a quantifier telling us how many dogs, and then the definite article identifying the field. And in this one, we've got a lake and we've got trees. So the and those are the determiners identifying the lake and those trees. And finally, we've got our dungarees. Okay. So where's our determiner here? It's these. So these dungarees, are these dungarees yours? Well done if you got all of those. Right, moving on to our main task for today. If you remember, we're in the process of writing our own non-chronological report about the Vikings. And yesterday, I introduced your task and asked you to come up with the first two information paragraphs. Or, sorry, I let me rephrase that, to plan your first two information paragraphs. Today, you're going to plan the other two. So, altogether, you're going to have four information paragraphs. Yesterday, you planned the first, first two. Today, you're going to plan 
paragraph three and four. Remember, you need to think about what you're going to share. What information do you want to put across? Is your report going to be quite general and talk about four completely different aspects of Viking life? So maybe a paragraph about food and drink, maybe a paragraph about the, the village, maybe a paragraph about long ships and a paragraph about weapons. So it could be they could be very separate paragraphs under that heading of Vikings. Or you might decide that you want to focus on one particular part of Viking life and split that into four separate paragraphs. So, for example, we talked about weaponry. So maybe you want to do a paragraph on, uh, say, farm tools that become weapons, then a paragraph on weapons that are designed and made just to be weapons. Then you might do a paragraph about protection and armor. Uh, and then you might do a paragraph about battle tactics. So all your paragraphs could be on the same general topic. That is up to you. So today we're going to be playing paragraphs three and four. As I said, you need to think about what, the, what you're going to talk about, what your subheadings are going to be. What are the key facts that you're going to tell the reader? And what's your topic sentence, remember the introductory sentence, going to be? You need to do some research here, guys. Now, you can either go back through our uh, wider curriculum lessons, or you can go online or in topic books and find out for yourself. Remember, this is a plan. So just in note form, little bullet points, just to help you out as we get nearer to the conclusion and the, the main write-up. Okay, so just bullet points and information. So there is your box up. There was a copy of this on, uh, on our team's channel, on the, the uh, resources channel. So for those people who've got access to printers, you can print this off and write in the boxes. For those who haven't, don't worry. It's not a problem. But these are the sections that you're writing in. So yesterday, in our last lesson, you should have come up with a uh, subheading for your first paragraph, the introductory sentence, that topic sentence, and then just a list of information, a list of facts that you're going to turn into sentences at a later date. You should have done that twice for paragraphs one and two. Today, we're going to concentrate on paragraphs three and four. OK, so your task today is to decide what information is going in these two paragraphs. Decide what your subheadings are going to be. Decide what your uh, topic sentence, that introductory sentence, is going to be. And then fill it with a big, long list of information. What facts do you want to share with us? OK, so this is where your research comes in. Lots of bullet points, short phrases, even single words, maybe even little sort of scribble diagrams to remind you of something, or little web diagrams. Any any style you like to collect and collate your information. Remember, that can be from our lessons or from the internet or from topic books if you've got access to them. Okay. So subheading, just a reminder of what each one is. All of this is in previous lessons if you want to go back, but the subheading tells the reader what the subject of each paragraph is, and it's useful to help the reader sort of navigate the page. The topic sentence, that's that first sentence and tells the reader what the paragraph is going to be about. The paragraph itself is going to be in a lot more detail, but that opening sentence just tells them, gives them a clue as to what the information is. And then the paragraph itself, these are the core parts of your report. They give detailed information and they should be able to be read, read in any order. OK, so once this, this report is finished, I could read paragraph four and it would still make perfect sense on its own without reading one, two and three. OK, so there's your task for today. Paragraphs three and four. Hope that makes perfect sense. Remember, the whole box up is on Teams if you want it. If you're happy just to write on, say, separate pieces of paper, that is equally fine. This is just a plan. This really is just the plan. Okay. That's it for today. So keep yourself safe.
keep those around you safe and i will see you all very very soon take care guys <laughs>